innovative technology that allow us road warriors to be just as effective on the road as in the field. Hi, I'm Mark Bunting, and welcome to Computer City. More specifically, welcome to Computer City TV. Now, many of you may know me from my nationally syndicated show, The Computer Man, or from my program, Bunting's Window to the World of Computers on United Airlines. Well, now, every time you come to Computer City, I'm going to be showing you the latest, the greatest, the hottest new products. So stay tuned for this edition of Bunting's Window to the World of Computers here on Computer City TV. Now, if you're buying your first computer, you know, all those technical names and numbers can be pretty intimidating, but they need not be. It's actually pretty simple. First of all, here's a few of the specifics you need to consider. Processors. Now, you'll find Pentium systems, 486 systems, even Macintosh systems that run on a whole different processor. In addition to the processor, there's things like memory. Now, there's both hard drive memory and RAM or random access memory. Now, you've got to have sufficient hard drive space so you can store all your software programs. And as for random access memory, or RAM, you need enough RAM on your computer so you can run those applications faster, keep more of them open at the same time, and really make the most of your processor power. Hey, I want to show you these hot new compact Presario desktop computers and talk to you a little bit about the state of affairs with desktop PCs today. You know, it may seem like you're spending a little bit more money this year than last, but you're getting a lot more value. Today's systems are coming standard with all those multimedia tools that you need and also Pentium processors, which cost a little bit more money, but give you a lot more value. In fact, Compaq is really leading the way with the Presario. Let's check out this new Presario 774 CDS. Now, first of all, this is a 75 megahertz Pentium processor, so you have got one screaming Ferrari of an engine inside this box. In addition to that, it comes standard with 8 megabytes of RAM and a 725 megabyte hard drive. So you've got all the storage room that you need necessary to store those Windows programs. Now, in addition to that, it comes with all the multimedia tools you're going to want. Quad spin CD-ROM, so you've got a really fast CD-ROM player to play your favorite multimedia games or your reference materials. In addition, it comes with a 16-bit sound card that includes a 14-4 fax modem, and you've even got the ability now to answer your telephone calls with your computer. Yes, the sound card has got a voice chip on it, which allows you to have hands-free phone conversations, set up phone mailboxes, all through your computer. I call it staff in a box. If you're setting up a home business, you've got all the tools you need right here, powerful and easy to use. Now, the Presario 774 CDS comes preloaded with a bevy of software as well. I mean, everything you're going to need to get started is already loaded right out of the box. You're ready to roll. First of all, you've got Microsoft DOS and Microsoft Windows, so you've got all the basics. But in addition to that, you've also got Microsoft Works, which includes a word processor, a spreadsheet, even a little bit of database functions. So you've got all those business tools you need to set up your home business, for example. But in addition, you've got some really fun things, too. How about Microsoft Encarta? which is a multimedia CD adventure through the world of current events. It's really a lot of fun for the kids and for the adults as well. You've got Quicken for your personal finances. There's even a software package that allows you to explore home repair and fix things around the house. Last but not least, you've got games galore, even an aviation package if you want to try your hand at flying. Now there's also a Presario 992, which is a 100 megahertz Pentium processor, which comes standard with 16 megabytes of RAM and a one gigabyte hard drive. I mean, we're talking real full feature. Now, when you hear people talk about multimedia, this is exactly what they're talking about. The ability to play back full motion video on your computer is just one example of the really cool things you can do if you have a multimedia computer. 
Now, in addition to full motion video, you can play back animations, cool graphics, even play your audio CDs on your computer. Now, you need a CD-ROM drive, a sound card, and a set of speakers. That's the appropriate equipment if you want to take advantage of the world of multimedia. There's a broad range of how computers are used in, in doing visual effects for feature films. This, this area is what we call visual effects. It's not special effects, it's visual effects. Trick photography, basically. One of the things that's happened recently, and, and one of the reasons that you're seeing so much use of computers in films now, is that the cost of doing computer animation has pretty much equaled the cost of doing it the traditional way. One of the, one of the things is that it's faster to do on a computer, but you've got a much more expensive machine sitting there doing it. Uh, traditionally, you've kind of got, you know, you've got a room with like a bunch of old guys in it that are fiddling around, and they don't tend to cost that much, but they take longer to do it. So this is, uh, kind of a behind the scenes look at the first shot from True Lies. What we're trying to do is we're trying to establish that that chateau in the distance is in the Swiss Alps. It's supposed to be a very ritzy chateau. It turns out that the location they found for the chateau was actually a mansion in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, of course, the mountains and the lake and the dock in the foreground never existed. The water in the, in the mid-ground is computer generated and the mountains in the far distance are um, actually a vacation slide from one of our animators. This is just the branch element in the foreground against a green screen to isolate it. This here is the, um, this is the dock. Again, a green screen is in the background to help separate it. Here you can see the mansion and the mountains just by themselves moving in the background. Now that, that image of the mansion has been placed into those mountains. Here's a reflection in the water. Again, that water in the middle is completely computer generated. There was never a lake, never, never any of this uh, existed. So finally, once again, here's the completed shot as it appeared in the movie. Beautiful Lake Chapeau, Switzerland. Never really existed. Where this field is heading, it's very difficult to tell. The, um, Things are changing very quickly. Once again, all of a sudden, we're finding that it's the ideas that matter. It's the fact that somebody decides they want to make this image that is driving things. It's not so much the fact that we can do it all of a sudden. I, I guess, actually, that is true. What computers have done is they've opened up a, a broader range of possibilities. And They've all of a sudden let filmmakers' minds run a little bit wild, and, of course, and, and things that were just not worth even considering for budget reasons or for practical reasons, all of a sudden now you can start thinking of doing. Now, buying a monitor is a lot like buying a television set. They come in varying degrees of picture quality or resolution. They also come in lots of different sizes. Now, for me, the rule of thumb is find one that looks good to you. Now, you can check with your Computer City salespeople. They'll help you with all the technical specifics. But again, the rule of thumb, just like that television set, find one that's pleasing to your eye, find one that you think you'll be comfortable sitting in front of for many, many hours, and that's probably the one that's right for you. This one from NEC looks good. <laughs> Fitting, Jim. I feel like I'm inside one of your uh, NEC monitors looking out through a, through a screensaver. Yeah, we're wearing yeah. screensavers. <laughs> this is great. Well, speaking of monitors, let's talk a little bit because I know you've got an yeah. exciting new line of monitors. Uh, NEC. 
well known for having very brilliant high resolution displays, lots of functionality, and I've got monitor envy, I'm going for NEC, but never at $800 for a 17 inch monitor. That's quite a breakthrough. Yeah, this is a great story, Mark, because we're delivering a product, the Multisync XV17, which is a 17 inch high-end monitor for under $800 street price. Now, am I getting the 1280 by 1024 high-end resolution? You sure are. You're getting the high resolution, high refresh rates. We also have plug-and-play compatibility in this product, so when Windows 95 does ship, it will be uh, perfectly compatible with it. Uh, also has our on-screen manager, which is an on-screen display menu of all the adjustments that you make to the monitor for geometry, screen size, and so forth. Now, since it's multi-sync, I can also plug this into a Macintosh or a PC, right? That's really really been one of our heritage items is that uh, we work on different platforms and different resolutions and different video cards. So it's Mac compatible, PC compatible, Power Mac compatible, you name it. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things today I think people used to call 17-inch oversize, it's really now the default standard. And I think for a couple of reasons, so many people are using Windows and they're keeping multiple windows open that they need the additional real estate or screen space so that they can have a uh, old window open to the internet or to their online service while they're also doing a spreadsheet. Heck, sometimes now they're watching CNN news all at the same time. Um, but also the, the eye strain issue. Right. You know, if you focus and look hard at a really uh, brilliant color monitor, a small one for a long period of time, sometimes it can give you eye strain. I, I think a lot of parents are hip to this and are wanting to get this uh, uh, larger screen so it's not such a strain on their kids' eyes in particular. Yeah, exactly. And we are using our computers more and more every day in our lives. And those tiny imperfections can add up to real eye fatigue over time. And that's why at NEC we've really concentrated on a, a great screen image for our products. Well, most people prefer not to look at a 12 or 13 inch color television set. And right. The computer monitor is a good analogy, you know, especially if you're going to spend that much time in front of it. Right. That, that makes it, I think, a huge difference. Now, you've got these in 14 and 15 inch models also? We sure do. The Multisync XV14 and Multisync XV15. They're also extremely aggressively priced for those of you who are on a real budget. Well, again, for people who have always had monitor envy and wanted an NEC, you're now giving a lot of people an affordable option to use your products that may not have been able to in the past. I think it's going to be a big hit for you. Yeah, I think so too, Mark. Great. All right, thank you. You've got modems, cables, mouse pads, all the accessories you need to start your home office. Now, speaking of home-based businesses, you know, lots of people are starting their own operations out of their own houses, and you need all these different tools to get set up. Now, here's a really cool home office story from the Phoenix, Arizona area, a guy who actually gives lessons flying ultralights. Okay, this is the home, right? This is the office. Home office story. Okay, now, John, let me get this right. This is, you live over here. Right. This is your house, this is your hangar, so this is a home office. Yes, it is. Okay, I would say this is a little bit different than a traditional home office. So now you live over here, you work on the side, doing ultralights. Right. Okay, this is very cool stuff. Now tell me a little bit about these, about your business. Well, it's a school, and we, we teach people to fly, we rent aircraft, we also uh, have safaris, Safaris would be uh, where four or five people will take off and fly up to the lake or whatever and camp out. But what are some of the things that you would use a computer for at an ultralight business? I mean, give me some examples of how it helps you. Well, we just got started in computers. Uh, uh, a friend of mine upgraded his and he gave me his old Amiga and we started using it to type correspondence. Once we started using it, we got hooked on it. Yeah. And now we can't live without it. We send faxes to Europe all the time because our suppliers are in Europe. Are these things made in Europe? Yes, these are made in France. Oh. 